Hello and welcome. My name is Mal and this is Wasteland 2 Director's Cut. Now, this will be season six for me. Yes, this will be the sixth time that I've played through Wasteland 2. Uh, however, this will be the first time that I'll be playing through the new Director's Cut version. For those of you that are joining from the Xbox One or the PS4, welcome to the Wasteland 2 experience. I hope that you uh, enjoy the game and that you enjoy this Let's Play. Now, I'm going to put a link right about here in the middle of the screen that'll take you to a playlist that includes guides for Wasteland 2. Things like how to build your team, um, what to do in the first couple of hours of gameplay. I also have a combat guide um, and I take a instance from early in the game and show you exactly how to handle that encounter. Uh, and people can, you know, there's a lot of complexity to Wasteland 2. Um, you know, a role-playing game with uh, tactical combat, it's it's not everybody's, uh, you know, not everyone's really experienced with it, so I built these guides uh, from the standpoint of, you know, you didn't have to have any previous experience at all playing this type of game, and hopefully you'd be able to do well. So again, I'll put that link here. Now, um, it's also important to note that as we jump into this new Let's Play, I have already done some things in those guides and I'm going to sort of pick up from where those guides leave off. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I spent about three hours in total. Um, that means having interactions within the Ranger Citadel. It means having random encounters out in the waste. Uh, there was also a weapons vendor uh, that, uh, well, the weapons vendor donated to my cause. I'll say that. Uh, so my, my team is relatively uh, well equipped. Uh, and I will be playing on Supreme Jerk difficulty. So that is the, the toughest difficulty that you can set the game on, which makes sense. It keeps things challenging for me. Uh, the other thing is, is that generally speaking, if you're not familiar with my channel, I tend to play things in, in Iron Man mode, you know, or forced Iron Man, uh, which means I operate off of, of one save. Um, I will I will do that with this. So if my team gets completely wiped out, chances are uh, that will be ending the, the let's play. But but it'll be OK. It'll be OK. I, I've made it through uh, the game before on a single save. I we could probably do it again. So let's get to it. Roger that, Echo One. When you reach the area where Ace's body was found, give it a good going over. The folks that picked him up said it looked like he crawled there. Maybe you can find some tracks leading to where he was attacked. Copy? Okay, so to give you a bit of background, because obviously um, you're not seeing the very beginning of the game here, because again, I covered that uh, in my guides. Uh, you start off, uh, this is obviously a post-apocalyptic setting. Um, the Rangers, uh, as we're called, uh, formed from a group of Army Corps of Engineers uh, years and years ago. Um, and have been trying to basically bring law and order to the wastes. Um, our, uh, our, our chief, or, or, or actually the, the head officer, General Vargas, has tasked us with, the, um, with in increasing our range, our sphere of influence, by uh, setting up these radio tower extenders. Now, the secondary objective is that one of the most experienced rangers, Ace, um, has gone missing and we're supposed to investigate what has happened. So he's asked us to go east to the radio tower, which is where we're at. We just entered into this area and we're going to pick up the story from this point. There really isn't anything much that happens at the beginning other than Ace's funeral and a little bit of background information. And again, if you go check out the Wasteland 2, what to do in the first couple hours of gameplay, all that's covered in that video. OK, so let's get to it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Roger that. Echo 1, when you've reached the area where Ace's body is found, give it a good going over. Folks that picked him up look like he was crawling there. Maybe some tracks will lead elsewhere. Copy? Yes, we copy that, General Vargas. In for Echo 1 and check in immediately with any new info. Those repeater units are a top priority. Make right. Command out. So we need to find what happened because Ace is the one that had the repeaters. So we've got to get these radio repeaters and then we'll need to get them installed at various locations. But we'll get to all that. So as you can see here, my team, I have my uh, now this is my what I, I like to refer to as my monkeys. So I have my leader monkey, Mal. I have my uh, AP monkey or action point monkey, Eve, which is really combat focused. Then I have Bear and Bear is my sniper monkey, as you can see there. And then I have Christy Smith, who is I affectionately refer to as my skill monkey. Now, um, if you're again, if you're not familiar with the skill system or how any of this works, don't worry. I will sit back, relax. I'll explain things as we go along. If you want better insight into how to build this team, I have a complete video that covers that and it'll be in the description below this video. All right, let's go. 
Let's see, our sniper monkey needs to lead things. We're gonna activate perception here. All right. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna hit the Z key. That's gonna give me the highlight, and I can see right here that there's something to pick up. So let's go check this out. We'll go examine it. Snagged on one of the lower branches uh, of the bush is a bronze star with the words Desert Ranger on the outside ring. Okay, so this is this is Ace's badge. And it uh, we're gonna go ahead and take that. That's Ace's star. How did it end up way the hell over here? So we'll hold on to this, uh, because quite frankly, um, General Vargas will want it, so we're gonna hold on to it. Just put it over here on my leader guy. Now, this NPC that I have with me, Angela Death, um, you can actually get this same character. Uh, she's available in the Ranger Citadel. Just look around and she'll join your group no problem. She's more experienced than the rest of your Rangers, so it's a good idea to make sure you have her before you leave um, out into the Wastes. She had a pre-existing relationship uh, with Ace, so it, it's kind of hit her harder, and that's the reason that she's with you. Uh, she's actually uh, wants to get uh, revenge for, for Ace's death. So that's why she's tagging along. Okay, let's see. We're gonna head over here. Let me bring up the map. We're gonna head over here. You're gonna come into this area here. You're gonna break east. And right over here is gonna be some rangers. And this is the, or excuse me, some raiders. Uh, and this is probably the first sort of proper fight that you get into in the game. And then right after that, there's an even tougher fight that you have to handle. So I'll try to do these in a little bit of detail for you. Some quick interface tips for you. I don't get shaken up easy, but this place is sending shivers up my spine. God damn it, Ace. Why won't you let me come with you? You can hit the space bar if you're on the PC, and that'll switch you to sort of single mode, so I can just move one ranger. That's pretty important. Um, you can also uh, do it over here. Yep, you can use the icon if you want. But we're just going to go ahead and move the whole group. So we can see that the raiders uh, in this area have uh, done some nasty stuff. This man's gut met with the pointy end of a raider's bowie knife. Yeah, so these are not nice people up here. Not at all. Okay, so we can see them off in the distance. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check range. So here's the weapon uh, that this particular uh, ranger has, a sniper rifle. And you can see here this little crosshair. If we hover over that, we can see the effective range. So, we're not going to have to move much further forward to have uh, the... Oh, actually, we're not going to move forward at all to have him in range. So we're just going to set up for this fight. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't even think I'm going to worry about taking cover. I don't think it's going to be necessary. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my sniper off and crouch. Makes you harder to hit. I actually will put my leader over here. So, going prone is a good idea. Uh, actually, I'm not going to use this character at all in this fight. I'll just move her away. Yeah, she's an energy weapons person, which really doesn't come into its own until later. And I don't need to spend uh, energy cells early on. It's kind of a, a waste of resources. So, I'll just set her off over here where she's out of range. Yep, get my combat people, spread them out a little bit. And we will use the sniper to pull. So, switch to bear. And we're going to say hello to this raider right here. Good morning. Okay, now we missed, but that's okay. Now, these blue flags here uh, that you see over these people's heads indicates that they're currently within range of my leader, who has leadership skill. And if we hover over like this, you can see who's being affected, the range of said leadership skill. This means that they're going to get, at this point right now, they're getting a, an increase of 6% chance to hit. And it scales up. Um, now, the area effect of leadership is actually controlled by your charisma stat. So, the leadership skill gives you the increase in percentage, and the charisma stat gives you its range. Okay. Now, let's take a look at these icons. Okay, well, we know right off the bat, even if we weren't looking at this guy, that the icon off of underneath his feet... The little knife indicates that he is a melee combatant. This guy's got a handgun, therefore he is a handgun combatant. 
I'm not sure what this guy back here is, but uh, we'll see when he moves up. This guy has cover. You can see there's a little white shield that represents that he has additional protection. Now, um, I'm not too concerned about being in the open in this fight, and the reason why is because these guys are actually going to move towards us. The AI is kind of stupid this way. It doesn't always uh, take appropriate coverage, or excuse me, cover. And since this guy has very limited range with his handgun, he's going to have to move forward to attack us, as is the melee guy. So, no problem. Let's go ahead and pop this guy. Now, we could right-click for um, a, you know, more selected shot, but our skills are so low at the beginning that it's it's not really worth it. Though I will say that these aim shots, which is new to the director's cut, is really, really cool. And I'm, I'm excited about what kind of impact this is going to have to combat um, as we get further down the road and we have the skill to actually take advantage of it. All right, so let's shoot this dude. Okay, and he's dead. Now, things are going to look different for you in terms of uh, the number of hit points things have um, or how much damage they do to me and whatnot. And that is because I'm playing on Supreme Jerk difficulty. I think I mentioned that earlier. So if it looks a little different to you because of that, that's the reason why. Okay, let's in turn. This indicates the total number of action points that we can use in combat. And down here is how much it costs to fire that weapon. Anything in the blue, light blue area here means that we could move that far and still be able to take a, an action with that weapon. Okay, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to set ambush. And we're going to wait. And I'm actually going to move up over here with my AP monkey. And I'm going to ambush over here. And my energy person, energy weapon user, yeah, she's carrying a pistol, but this ultimately is uh, an energy weapon user. I'm just going to have her hang out back here because I don't want her involved in the combat. And my leader, who is a shotgun guy, you know what? I think I want to take a position over here. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll just move slide on over there next to uh, next to Eve and in turn. Now, if you have leftover action points, um, one to two points will carry over to the next combat round. So it's not a waste if you have a few extra points. OK, so now we have two raiders down. And that's three raiders down and there's the first fight. Doesn't matter who gets the kills, everyone gets the XP. Based on your charisma stat, you will have additional XP or you'll have less XP uh, if you have a really low charisma stat. Okay, let's see. Highlight everyone. Move over here and hit R to reload. All right, let's go loot. Let's see, who, uh, who's going to carry stuff? I guess she can. That's fine. Take all, take all. Now, if memory serves me correctly, yeah, there's some stuff to loot here, but there's some stuff back up on this hill over here that we'll go check out in a second. All right, let's go grab this. Oh, nice. A suture kit and anti-venom. Great. Again, if you're interested in what the starting team's stats are and their skill breakdown, there'll be links in the description of this video that'll uh, that'll take you to images that'll show you that exact information. I'm not going to go over all that right here. Okay, let's dig this up. Oh, nice. Great, a weapon mod. I let's see. Did I already take Pretty sure I've already got some weapon smithing. I do. So let's see. Go into my inventory. That's great. I get to show you guys this. Okay, I'll take this shotgun and give it to my sniper monkey. And the choke plus 10 cone angle reduces my range but increases the angle of the blast. Hmm. Do I want that on there? Yeah, I guess it'll be okay. So attach mod, attach it here to the shotgun. Yes, apply. And now you can see this little emblem here. And if we right click on that weapon, we can see that it has an open choke and that has been equipped. Pretty nice, huh? 
It's not like it's plus 10 cone angle, in other words, a better area of effect. Very nice. Hand that back to my leader guy. Here we go. A nice little find. Okay, now I'm holding down the Z key just to make sure there's no other things I can interact with over here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, now there is a gate right down here. Let me look at the map and show you this. So here's the encounter with the raiders, and then you can cut through here if you have lockpicking or uh, brute strength. You can um, you can basically break through over here, and there's another encounter with a little bit tougher group. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. What I what I am going to do is I'm going to kind of circle around over here. We're going to keep investigating. Aha! Oh, it's trapped, huh? Okay. So, we right-click on it, and now we have the... It automatically populates the options. This is nice. I really like this change in, in uh, the Director's Cut. So, we can do Brute Force. So, Angela could kick it down. We can lockpick it. Or we can disarm it. So, we're going to start from that. Try to disarm the explosives. Nice! Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and try lockpicking. Critical failure. So the lock's broken, however, we have mechanical repair, so we're gonna repair the lock. There we go. And then, we're gonna try to unlock it again. And there you have it. Now, with the, uh, let me show you this. Now, with the perk system, every four levels you get a special perk. And I actually have some available right now. Again, because I did play for about three hours before we got to this point. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna select those right now. I'll, I'll, I'll save that for the next, the, probably the beginning of the next video. Uh, but to give you an example of something that you could do, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Let me switch over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so here's our lockpicking person. Now, remember, uh, we critically failed initially. Now, we, we were able to repair the lock and try again. But one of the things that you could do, if you wanted to, is have someone in the group... Where's that at? You could have someone in the group with this ability. Okay, it requires a three mechanical repair. Um, you develop a, a measure of caution and have learned not to not uh, where not to stick your tools. <laughs> uh, no critical failures when using mechanical repair. That's pretty awesome. That means that you could break the lock with lock picking, and you could repair it with mechanical repair of three, and have handyman. And eventually, you're going to repair the lock, and you're going to have another chance to unlock uh, the 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 lock. Right. So that's pretty cool. So you need to look for uh, different ways to uh, sort of enhance your experience by using the new perk system. And there's lots of different perks. Uh, so make sure that you pay attention. And remember, you get one perk every four levels. So realistically, you could probably get somewhere between eight to 10 perks on, a, on each character. And some of them you want on all your characters. As an example, let me see here, like Tinkerer. Okay, one of the things you'll notice on, on my characters is that everybody ends up with a two weapon smithing because generally speaking, you're gonna wanna wear light armor to preserve your mobility. And if you take Tinkerer as a perk, you get plus one action point. That's really, really strong. That's a really good perk. Um, so I'll probably end up taking it on all my characters. That's sort of my plan right now. All right, so moving on. Let's see here. <laughs> okay, you got perception up. There we go, perception's up. You can see that white circle around means that he's sort of scanning that area. Okay, so we got some goodies. Nice. And they're not locked? Oh, they are locked. Okay. Well, some more lockpicking then. Uh, a nail board? That's a pretty good uh, early game blunt weapon. Now, I do have something better than that uh, right now, uh, because like I mentioned earlier, uh, a local weapons merchant made a <laughs> donation to the cause, so I've got a, some better tiered weapons at this point. Uh, let's see... Okay. 
Let's see, Bear needs the 30-06 ammo. And you can carry this, and you can carry that. Very nice. Ammo, um, as I understand it, based on what I've read in the Director's Cut version, ammo's a lot more plentiful than it used to be once you get to sort of the mid-game. Um, however, with this group, I have a shotgun user, I have a assault rifle user, I have a sniper, and then I actually have a person that's actually energy weapons based. So I have different weapons groups uh, for all of my characters, as well as the planned NPCs. So I don't anticipate having too many issues with ammo. Um, melee, very various melee um, soldiers are also uh, quite useful because they're, it's, they're, it's pretty strong, be it blunt or blade or even brawling. Uh, not only is it very strong, but it's very cost effective. You'll hear me talk about um, CPK or cost per kill. And it doesn't get any better than melee because you don't have any expenditure of ammo. All right, some more stuff. What do you got for us? Sap gloves. Okay. Take that. Medical supplies. Excellent. Let me explain that to you real quick. All right, so there's two skills. Mm-hmm. Under general. No, no, excuse me, under knowledge. There's two skills that control healing. Me uh, field medic is the ability to use various consumables. Um, med packs essentially of varying levels. So the higher your skill, the better med packs you'll be able to use, um, and the more that they'll heal. Okay. Now that's what you need. To basically, to, you could you can use them in combat if you want to, but it's 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 primarily to patch up when you're done. This other skill is the really important one, surgeon. So you need a trauma kit. Let me show you this. You need. Uh, I was pretty sure I had some trauma kits. Yes, I do. Basic trauma kit. So you need someone with at least one surgeon skill and a trauma kit in case you get incapacitated in combat. Then you can go over, apply a trauma kit to stabilize them. Because if they bleed out, they're done. And if you lose a character, they're gone. Well, I mean, I guess you could reload. I, I don't, but if you want to, you could. Otherwise, that soldier's dead or that ranger is dead unless you have a trauma kit to stabilize them. So... Surgeon skill, having a one surgeon skill on all your characters is a good idea. Now, do you need that right off the bat? No, but down the road, an investment of two skill points to get you a one surgeon skill uh, is a good idea. And then just have a basic trauma kit on everyone. Okay, let's keep going. Now, the next sort of big challenge that you're going to have is right here. So we fought the raiders here. We went up here, got through that fence, we looted this stuff, we went down here, picked up some more stuff, and now we're at the cave entrance. So inside the cave, we're actually going to uh, get a little bit more insight into what happened to Ace. Okay, well, looks relatively unassuming, right? <laughs> Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Okay, so right here, this little guy is nasty. Uh, yeah. So he's very tough. Probably the, the, the toughest fight you have early on. Creatures tend to be tougher. Let me back up, actually. I don't want to get spotted. Uh, creatures tend to be tougher in Wasteland 2 um, than uh, human opponents, particularly out in the Waste. And in this cave, this toad is pretty nasty. Not only is he tough because he's got armor, and you, you generally don't have weapons with, right here, a high armor-piercing rating when you start off, he's pretty tough to take down. Um, so you might want to, before you get to this point, get yourself some, some entry-leveled explosives like dynamite. You can buy that at the Ranger Citadel. You can also find it out in various vendors out in the Wastes, um, or even a grenade, um, because this toad's pretty dangerous uh, early on. So it shouldn't be a problem for us to handle it. I'm just, I'm just warning you. Okay, so again, I'm going to move up. One of the tough things about the Toad is that he can actually take your weapon away from you. Yeah, he can like basically do like this tongue lash thing. Just kind of nasty and just take that thing right away from you. Okay, we'll put Angela here. And I'll put my guy here. Okay, crouch. Now, you don't always want to crouch, by the way. I am in, in these first couple fights you're seeing. But you might not always want to do that if you're going to move position. So, like, as an example here with Angela, I'm going to swap to her melee weapon, this nightstick. 
And I'm going to set her just a little forward of the group. And I'm not going to have her crouch because I don't want to spend two action points to have her stand. What's the point of that if I'm going to end up rushing a target, right? This toad's pretty fast, though. It might basically be on us as soon as we attack. And per the norm, I'm going to take my sniper and I'm going to free aim and start the fight. Oh, okay. And just kill it. <laughs> okay. Well, what I would tell you is that that fight is generally tougher. Um, again, I do have upgraded weapons because I leveled up a little bit uh, before I started this area. So, which is good because of the difficulty I'm playing on, I kind of had to. Um, I, this group is not min-maxed for combat completely, but I did hedge my bets a little bit because I didn't want to have problems. Again, if you want to know how to, to kind of get these kinds of weapons and, and see the kinds of things I have, just watch that getting started uh, with Wasteland 2 video. That'll help you out. Okay, so let's see here. Let's grab this from the toad. What do we got here? Members only jacket? Hey, that's nice. I like it. Here. Take all that stuff. Logbook page, huh? Okay, so it would appear that Ace... Okay, we're going to highlight the area here. Got a little scrap that updated us and told us about the Rail Nomad Camp to the north. And this guy right here is what appears to have killed Ace. Now, we'll, we'll find another piece of this guy later, but uh, it would appear that a synthetic is what took Ace out. Here's those radio uh, repeater units that we need, so we're gonna go ahead and grab those. Yep, that's Ace's gear, all right. What the hell was this metal asshole planning to do with it? We should poke around the cave. Make sure he didn't drop nothing else. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so we can use computer skill on this guy, but we don't have any yet, huh? Or zero percent chance. Actually, I do have some computer skill. I was pretty sure. No, I don't have computer science yet. But Christy does, right? Yeah. Where the fuck did it come from? Never yeah. seen a robot so advanced before. Where did the robot come from? All right. So now we've got a 91% chance to use computer science on it. So we're going to do that. Aha. And we recovered a synth part. And some energy cells, 22. Nice. We'll take that. Appreciate it. Okay, anything else in here? Nope. All right. So now we need to get out. We have the repeaters. We need to get over, get over and install one of them. Some more blood trails here. Oh, and what's this? Leg is made of plastic and metal, scuffed and dented from hard use and badly mangled at the severed knee joint. Looks like it was removed from the rest of the body by a shotgun blast. Yeah, Ace didn't go down without a fight. Let's go ahead and grab that. Now, something else to note, right here we've got our health bars, that's that green bar. Underneath that, this yellow bar that sort of will show progress until it fills up is actually the experience bar. Lets you know how much further it is before you get a level up. Once you do get a level up, you actually just call in right up here, talk to General Vargas, you get your promotion. Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and end this one here. Now, when we pick it up in the next one... We'll continue investigating the area. Uh, I'll talk to you about some other things, too. Um, there's some sort of secrets and other things in this area that I think you might find interesting. But I hope that you did enjoy this first episode and that you continue to join me and the rest of the Rangers for uh, the next one. So thanks so much for watching. I am Mal, and I will see you later.